I'm free. Right. Yeah, but I didn't take my mask off. I can't talk. Carolyn, I think you have a sign of I start talking. I have COPD. And so I take deeper breaths and the mask hinders my breathing. And then I start coughing. And then everybody thinks I'm sick and I'm not. Okay, so no, I sniffle the whole time because it's all humid. Oh, yeah, it really is. And I like, yeah, I start going like this, and then it causes me to pop. Sure, and yeah, it's like, yeah. and all, yeah. all it's doing is triggering the CLP. Yeah, so I'm gonna talk about teas as I drink my coffee. I know I have my coffee. <laughs> I just finished mine. Uh, it's gonna stop at caribou, but um, didn't really have time once we, I didn't realize I was almost out of gas. But um, so, did you have other people signed up or not? We do. I feel like we can probably. Um, it, it, it's like, well, that says three or four. So yeah, it's three or five. I said we give it three minutes. Just you know, we do have I, more people signed up, but okay, I'm fine with that. I'm, you know, we have, and you. I just address the class like normal, but we do have eight people online. Oh, hey, everybody. <laughs> I'm trying not to be nervous. I don't know. I, I do these things all the time, but I always get so nervous. And sometimes when I'm nervous, I talk really fast. So one of the very first presentations that I did I uh, was at the White Earth um, Farmers Conference about five, six years ago, maybe seven years ago now. And I was supposed to talk for an hour and a half. I did my whole canning presentation in 20 minutes. Uh huh. Those people, they had to take notes fast. And then they're like, I said, okay, we're done. And they're like, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done. I have nothing more to tell you guys. But so anyways, um, just go for it. I'm just gonna start because the longer I wait, the more nervous I'll get. So my name is Sharon Nordrum and I am a Red Lake band member and live over on the outskirts of the Leech Lake Reservation. And I've done presentations for Leech Lake. I've come over here and I've done canning. We've done um, at the what is it called? It was the farm. Oh, you guys had like a farmer's summit. conference. But yeah, the food summit. Um, I did canning deer meat and spaghetti sauce. Did that. Um, I've done teas for Leech Lake Head Start. And I've been over in Whiter. I've, all, I've been all the way down to um, Little Falls to sprout at growers and makers and done traditional cooking. Um, and just finished up doing two videos on traditional cooking for uh, the Pine River School and then through the Minnesota um, University Extension Program. Um, my son has helped me with both of those ones because he is my gatherer. I do all, I use all this stuff, but I really don't like to go out and gather the items. And so he loves to gather and so he does all the gathering. So my son, Andreas. Um, and so today we're going to be talking about the some traditional um, teas that we use that are readily found around here. I think the biggest one that everybody knows about is the, the swamp tea, Labrador tea. How many of you guys have used the Labrador tea, swamp tea? You've used it, that's it? You I've never used that. I've heard all about it. You've heard all about it, but you've never used it. I have no idea what anybody is saying over there because I can't read that far away. Um, so, anyways, the Labrador tea, that's it, that's its name. Well, we call it swamp tea because it grows in the swamp. Um, you can pick this all year round um, and dry it and use it for colds it's really good if you feel a cold coming on and you know you start getting that scratchy throat um 
starting to feel a little bit of sinus congestion and stuff like that. If you start this right away, it will knock the cold out. If you're in a full blown cold and you start using it, it's gonna take a little bit longer for it. Um, but it's really good at the start of, of colds. Um, when, when you make any of these teas, if you go online or you're talking to people, they tell you to boil your water, get it to that rolling boil and put the stuff in, to put the, the leaves in, and then let it boil for the one, the one uh, website I was on said 20 minutes of this rolling boil. And I'm like, that's not the way we make tea. Remember, we had birch bark, muckucks that sat by a fire and we put our in that and we put our tea in that. Is that water and that muckuck gonna be a, a rolling boil? It's never gonna get to a rolling boil. You want to simmer your teas. Once you start boiling any food, all you're doing is you're, you're killing the vitamins, the minerals that are in that plant that, that you want. And so all of these plants, put them in a pot, bring it to a simmer, put a little bit of, of your leaves in there, and then let it sit and let it just steep. It's going to be more, have more medicinal value than putting it in that rolling boil. Another thing that I see a lot of folks doing. I think you don't have to boil it. You no, know, don't boil it, just steep it. Um, that boiling, any food, when you boil it, it just, it, it destroys all the, everything that's in it, really. You're taking everything away. It's just killing it. He is great for this. He makes a pot of tea and he goes over to the jar and he grabs a handful and he throws it in there. No, people, <laughs> for the up to time, my son, you only need a few tea leaves for a cup. Um, we actually just saw somebody the other day, they did, they were talking about making their swamp tea and they had like 50 leaves in there for like three cups of tea. You're overdoing it and it's actually can be more harmful to you. Um, a lot of these teas, if you put way too much into it, it can cause diarrhea. It can cause an upset stomach. It can, you know, it can, if you have heart issues, you use swamp tea too heavily it can cause your heart to, to act up a little bit. If you use just a few leaves for a cup of coffee, or a cup of coffee. <laughs> no, where my mind's at, people. I love my coffee. Uh, for a cup, you know, like two, three leaves, um, it's going to do a lot of good for you, and, but it's not going to be harmful to you either. So... What I put in these baggies for you guys to be able to take home is enough for like three to four cups of tea because the leaves are various sizes. So you're gonna to wanna to take that in consideration. Um, most of these leaves, the one out of the jar. Most of these leaves, this is the size that, put my glasses back on to do this. Most of the sizes that we like are like this. They come bigger. I don't know, can you guys see that? Okay, no. And you know, they come bigger and then they come really tiny. But if you're walking along and you're just picking leaves, you know, you're gonna get all sorts if you take them off the branch. On your handout, I printed what the tea looks like with the flowers on it. Um, Right now you can't get out in the woods. It's the, it's too, the handouts are right up over here. Oh, sorry, everybody. Did everybody get a handout? Um, no. So I printed what it looks like with the flower on. Um, but it's gonna grow in the swamp and it's got a beautiful white flower. 
and then the flower is going to go away, but the, the leaves are stay on the bush all year round. They don't fall off like, oh, um, so they're sort of like a, a conifer. And you can, if you can get out in the woods right now, it snows kind of deep. You could go out right now and pick, um, but you're going to want to go to a swampy area. Black spruce, tamarack. Black you spruce. know where you can get this really like simple? That bog walk in the past wash cake, this swampy all oh, along yeah. that bog. Yeah, that would be an excellent place to go. You don't have and, to go. And stay on, on the, on the, the, the walk. Yeah, the walk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was wondering about up here because we have not gathered up here. So his sugar bush has a mother load and you got to go way through the back of his sugar bush. And there's a mother load of swamp tea back that way. Um, I know where to get it over by Deer River. I know where to find it over in the Walker Onigam area, but I haven't looked for swamp tea up in this area, or I should say my sister and son haven't looked for swamp tea over in this area. So I'm really not exactly sure right up here where to find it. But that's swamp tea. And we're gonna, after we talk just a little bit, we're gonna go and um, make some for you you guys that have not had it. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is cedar. A lot of people, you know, they use cedar to smudge, which, you know, it's great. It's um, upper respiratory, um, but you can make uh, a cedar tea. It, again, is loaded with vitamin C, and I believe that it was cedar that has the product that's in Tamiflu. Oh, was that spruce? That's spruce. I get my, my plants mixed up. Also really quickly, someone said um, here that Neptune, the Neptune area has a lot of swamp tea on TRF. I don't know what that stands for. Thief River, River Road, uh, or Thief River Falls Road in Red Lake. So if you're looking for swamp teas, Neptune area. Oh, thanks yeah. for the info, guys. Appreciate it. All right. So yeah, um, so cedar, um, you can put it in a pot and you can boil it in your home. It helps detoxify the air. Um, so like if you've got somebody that's sick in your house, you can, you can put this on and it helps eliminate a lot of that illness that's in the air. It's really good for um, if you have fluid retentions, like your kidneys aren't, you know, don't work as well and you retain fluids. So you can use cedar for that. You want to make sure that when you're using your cedar that you don't let it dry out. Um, I know one lady that she, she sent me a picture and said, is it all right if I still use the cedar? And it was all brown. And I was like, no, gotta go out and get some new stuff. Um, Andreas just gathered this for me yesterday. Um, so this is extremely fresh. And we, we um, pick on, it's called the Necktie River Road over by us. And it's a road that only has like three houses. So it's not high traffic. We try to gather all of our stuff where there isn't a lot of traffic. So you don't have all that exhaust um, getting on your plants and um, try and keep them as pure as possible. So how many of you guys have had cedar tea? Okay, raise your hand. Mm -hmm. I'm standing up here exposing myself. You know? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Oh, you're so tired. You can't raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's cedar tea. And we'll, we're going to make some cedar tea too, because you said that you had cups, right? So yes. that we can do all this kind of stuff. The one that I just learned about, um, Shirley told me that she knew about it, um, but I've never made it. 
is spruce tea. Um, so I have to tell you guys, share a little secret that I am really, I really struggle with plant to, with tree identification. Um, you do? Yeah, yeah thank no, goodness. I, yeah. Oh, this is so wonderful. I'm so happy yeah, that other people great. struggle with this too. You know, my parents, my mom, she identified trees, plants, all this stuff. My dad too. I was in the woods all the while growing up. I can't retain it. It's like, it's just like uh, cedar. I got that one down. I know a balsam when I see it because my older sister said, remember the balsam is bald on two sides. Okay. So I'll pass this around. Um, you can see that the needles go all the way around uh, on this. So this is a spruce and a balsam would only have needles on one side or on, on these sides, but not on the top and the bottom. So it's bald on two sides, balsam. It's the only, it was like, yeah. So I was like 45 years old when I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a spruce. And this is a black spruce. Valid. Um, so. Less. Yeah, so it has a, a lot less. So it would look flat. Yeah, like it, there's like a, there are there's two bald sides. Yeah, there's two later. bald sides. So so like if you took and flattened this out, that's what a balsam would look like. Mm. It would have the top, you know, when you're looking at it like this, the top and the bottom, there's no needles on it. And it's the two needles come off the sides. So but that's really great. I'm exposing myself to all these people I don't even know who's on there, that I am poor at tree identification. And yet I'm talking to you about drinking them. <laughs> Trust me, you can drink these ones. <laughs> so the spruce, like I said, I just learned that you can, I knew that you could eat the spruce tips in the springtime but I didn't know that you could gather spruce in the winter and use it for colds, flus. And that's the one where it was, it has the product in it that's in Tamiflu. So, you know, it's, it's an excellent. I, I remember my mom telling me about my grandpa going out when he felt he was getting sick, he would go out to, the spruce tree and he would take the pitch with his knife because it would drip, you know, and he would take that and he would eat the pitch off of, off of the tree. And my grandpa apparently was very healthy. They have her condition, but he was very healthy in the cold and flu area. He hardly ever got sick because he used that. And then I find out that it has that product in it that they're using in Tamiflu, which I guess is a really good over-the-counter flu medication. Yeah, that's like, it's pretty much a go-to now if you, whatever, are exposed or think you might have to go or doctor thinks you might have to do something else. It's so it's not over-the-counter, it's a prescription? It's not. I don't think it's over-the-counter. I'll be honest, in the last couple of years, as you may have been probably relaxed that, and uh -huh. we're lucky to over the counter now, but okay. the last time. The last time I had a kid that really the flu that affected me, and I just threw that type of flu right at him and his sister, even though she had no symptoms because she was asthmatic. Oh, okay. That's what they just, and it, I mean, it worked. they still endured the flu. They still had it, but. But it lessened it? I think so. Um, I've never had the flu, so I can't, but they were. <laughs> You've never, never had the flu? Is that a miracle? Oh, yeah. That is amazing. <laughs> yeah. But I recall him missing more than like, well, yeah, he didn't miss more than a day or two of school. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sure it lessened it. Yeah. yeah, I haven't had the flu for about three or four years now. And I'm thankful. Yeah, you know, it's for miserable. Sure. For sure. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I can't tell you. 
Yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to be so. I feel really. <laughs> um, yeah. So you just take and you can go out and you can gather this any time of the year. Like I said, in the spring, you can go and get the, the tips. The tips are really good and you can eat those. Um, and then you would just take and again, you would simmer this in a pot of water and you can inhale it and you can also um, drink the tea. I have not used this. But again, I would not like, I would take a branch off and I would put a branch in until I got, and then I would let it simmer until I got a pretty yellow color. You know, um, once the, the tea start getting really dark, the darker the tea, the stronger the tea. And I don't think that that's really all that healthy. So um, I would just use one of these branches in fact, you guys can, we can divvy this up. Seeing as how there aren't very many of you here, there's everybody can have one to take home. Um, and you said you can eat the tips. Yeah, you can eat that. They're like yeah. really, in the, in the that, spring when they come. Yeah, that watch them soft and, and they're, they're just beautiful. They yeah. Are. I've seen people see them soak them in water. Uh huh. Water. What do you drink them with? Um, you just drink it. Yeah. So I, I put them in water and let it soak and then drink that like a, a flavored water. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have heard people say that they have added them to different dishes and stuff like that yeah. and sauteed them. Yeah. Like the also colors. like the fiddleheads. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you can also take the little cones. If you get the cone before it starts to harden yeah. and you can eat that also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that you could eat the cones. That was something new that I just learned. Um, I've never eaten a cone. <laughs> I don't know what it tastes like. I think I'll try it this year. I have a black spruce in my yard, so it's not like it's, you know, I have to ask somebody to go and harvest it for me. I can, I can, I can harvest that one. <laughs> I baked bread with the tips too. Really? Yeah. What have you done? I baked bread with yeah, spruce tips. Bread. Really? Mm -hmm. that it was so pretty. I did little lilac flowers, which don't taste like anything, but they're very pretty. Mm -hmm. And I just baked bread and it was, it was delicious. Lilac can have a really a strong flavor though. Um, can't remember Guy Green. What's Guy Green's wife's name? Anna? No, that's not right. Anyway, she made, um, she took maple syrup candy and, but she made, she added lilac mm -hmm. to it. Um, that was interesting. I don't know if I would ever do that myself. I like lilac soap, and that's sort of what it reminded me of when I put it in my mouth was that that scent. You know how you get a scent in your head, and it's like that's what it should taste like too, is that scent from the soap. So it was a psychological thing. Um but yeah, it was interesting. It was it was an interesting taste. Um, but um, you can take and you can, uh, being off topic, you can take the lilac and you can just put that the lilac blossoms in water and have that steaming on your back burner and that makes your house all smell like lilac too. Mm -hmm. Smells really pretty. I've done that. I like that because then it's like, lilac is one of my favorite flowers. So. Um, but my kitties, it's their favorite flower too. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is um, mullen. And did you get a? I think she got it. No, oh, she just handed one. Oh, did you? Okay. So mullen. Has anybody had mullen tea? Mullen tea? Anybody on here have mullen tea? Any of you guys had mullen tea before? Yes. I hear yes. I hear yes too. So has Joy. So has Raina. Very nice. All right. I have. And you have. <laughs> 
So yeah. Okay. So mullet the flower also, um, and you can crush those up, and you can make a tea. You can add them as a seasoning. Um, I have not done that, um, but you can. You can take flowers and you can put it in oil. So ear cleaner for your dog. Um, so, you know, because it's antibacterial. And so um, if you have asthma or know somebody that has asthma, mullein is a really a good plant for that because it, it clears out all of that mucus um, that, that forms in your lungs. Um, when you have bronchitis or deep colds or any of those kinds of things and you get all mucusy in here, if you make your mullein tea and drink that, it helps clear all of that up. But the great thing about mullein is that you can also you can crush this and if you have a pipe, you can smoke it. You can also take and just put it into a, a small lunch and breathe it, inhale it that way. My sister, because my sister is asthmatic, and this is all we have until the plant comes this summer. Um, so she uses she does smoke it quite a bit. Uh, she has a that she uses and, and um, it really helps her breathing. Um, mullen grows in areas that have been disturbed. In my old garden. In your old garden? So your old garden was disturbed area, but um, along railroad tracks and stuff, a lot of people will see mullen. I, I don't recommend picking from along railroad tracks and that because the, the um, toxins that are in railroad ties and the train going through and all that kind of stuff. So, but um, we have a hill over on 64 over by Apley that the mullen grows up on that hill. So then it's higher up from the road too. So you're not getting the exhaust from the cars um, and you can pick mullen there. Um, I prefer, and this is just a preference because plants will take up the toxins from the grounds in the area. I prefer to use the smaller leaves a lot of people are like, oh, I mean, I'm going to take this great big one that's down here at the bottom because that's a lot, lot of tea. Um, I prefer to take the ones that are higher up so that there's less toxicity in, in the plant itself. We live in, an air, in a day that there is so much toxins in our world that these medicines, we want to keep them as pure as possible. And so... I, I know that Shirley does too, because you can see, you know, she picked this one. You can see the, how small that leaf is. You know, there's a little piece that fell off, but it's just tiny across. And in the picture on here, Mullen, where are you? Oh, here you are. You can see how big those leaves down at the bottom, they get massive. Like they're like like huge when they're down at the bottom. Um, and someone has a question too. They couldn't hear exactly which part of the the plant to use because they heard about the flowers and they heard about the leaves. Which do you use for what? You can use either one of them for for tea. Um, the flowers make a very um, aromatic, mm. yeah, aromatic type of of tea. So you can use them in the springtime and you can take that or you can use the leaves. It's preference, you know. Um, show them the picture <laughs> there. Show them the picture. Yep. It's like, I'm walking near you, people. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Those are the flowers and then the leaves. Um, this year was kind of an odd year. And when Rachel contacted me about doing this, 
Um, it was late in the year for gathering a lot of things um, to do a lot of different types of teas. But Shirley's like, if it doesn't snow, because when did you contact me? Like the end of October? Yeah. She's like, if it doesn't snow, over by Emily, I saw a beautiful mullein bush that our mullein stock that was still slightly the silvery green color. It hadn't really turned brown yet. We can go and get that. And I'm like, oh, that'll be great. Let's go on Saturday. We both had Saturday free. And we woke up to a bunch of snow. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, I guess we're not going and gilling the mullet, but we could have if we would have been able to go out on Friday instead of Saturday, we would have been able to collect. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're collecting these. You can start collecting right away when, when the stock starts coming up and you, you see leaves, you can start collecting. Some things like the spruce, the cedar, you can get all year round. The swamp tea, as long as you can get close to it, you know, if it's not too bad, you can get, um, you can collect that all year round. Um, I brought along, I didn't even write about this one, but I was looking on my shelf and I just brought along, this is raspberry leaves. Mm. Um, smells so good. Um, but Andreas found raspberry back on our property and then he went back out and he gathered gathered leaves and oh, if you add this to cedar it just it's just an amazing taste to add some raspberry leaves to it um i really don't know the medicinal value of raspberries but it tastes good, good for women, women issues oh yeah as soon as you said that, I'm like, yeah, I remember Tally telling me about that. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it could be, and it could be the, the drying process. Yeah, maybe. You know, um, because that's the next thing I'm going to talk about for drying. But yeah, it's some. Um, yeah, it's nothing at all like that. Do you buy the whole leaves? Or do you buy it crushed? I just gave it away to a my I brought it, it's like a little, how do you explain it? It's like a little, uh, like a little flower on a hand flap, no. <laughs> a little bud. It's so fluffy. Oh, uh, okay. So they're not picking the leaves, they're picking the, the, uh, the after the berry, after you take the berry off, they're, collecting that oh, okay like yeah case. yeah that little yeah. like know you, you know like rose hip you know yep. that part yep. i don't know if that's called but uh, when you pick the raspberry you do it just right make that little pop and uh -huh. you don't have that little yeah case. that little yeah. the little casing that oh, holds okay. the berry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but this thing. yeah this is just the leaves so i don't know if there's a real big difference or not that'll be interesting i think i'll go home and do some research on that has anybody got any ideas online? Does that change? Uh, if you're doing the leaves or if you're doing the, the raspberry, whatever that thing is called? I'm sure it has a name. No, it has a fun yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Someone says so. they use the young leaves. Yeah, from these, the raspberries. Yeah, these are all young leaves. They're they're the small ones. Again, um, I prefer, and I don't know if it's like a blood memory type thing or if I remember hearing it some place. My mom or my um, my sister in law, her mother was really great in in doing teas, but I I rem for some reason or other small leaves and young leaves are, are what I think about. And so this is what you have, huh? This is metal here. Oh, okay. Well, I think actually it would be the same, that they're dried different. Um, 
The, these ones here are air dried, and I bet you this is put into a dryer so it stays greener. And um, there's little tiny, little tiny um, parts of the branches in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I bet you if I took and I crushed mine all up, mine would just be brown. And this is like two years old. And, um, but I think it would probably be about the same amount. Then this is nettle tea. Nettle? I really don't know a whole lot about nettle. I, um, I know that you can take stinging nettle and if you're, um, it's good for arthritis, mm -hmm. rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. and that, but I've never drank it as a tea. Um, I know that if you take the nettle, the, the plant itself and you slap that area, raspberry, raspberry, raspberry and here's nettle. We went to um, went over to Dale's last early summer, uh -huh. and her nettle, her um, nettle was like about that tall from here, and we could just put our hands on there, nothing. But we went back when it was this tall yeah. and put our hands on. Oh, that yeah. stings! Yeah. But if you take that that plant and if you would have cut it when it started to sting you, and like say you have um, a bad shoulder or tennis elbow or something like that, and you pound that plant onto that joint area, it's going to sting like crazy, of course, because yeah. it's stinging metal, but it's going to also relieve all of that pain in there. Mm -hmm. So what exactly it's doing, if my sister was here, she could probably tell you, because she has, she has worked with stinging metal, and I have not. Even though I have the rheumatoid arthritis, and she, she doesn't. <laughs> well, I mix these two of the nettle and the raspberry tea with the dandelion root, and that's supposed to help um, control your blood sugar and um, blood pressure. So mm. I have a work that um, goes with that too. The dandelion, yeah. Dandelion root, and I put some of them into my little container, then the root, and then make myself a cup of tea. Oh, that's really interesting. So have you found that the dandelion root tastes like coffee? I don't think I add enough to make, I just add like a little bit. Just a little bit? Yeah. Because they say that you can take the dandelion root and dry that and ground that up and it's supposed to taste just like coffee. I do have dandelion root at home that I keep thinking that I should try it, um, but kind of a chicken <laughs> and not sure that I really want to um, uh, do that with my coffee. But, okay. you know, anyways, it's something, you know, it's sitting there and one of these days, maybe I'll get brave uh, and try that. But yeah, dandelion root um, is, is a, a really a good medicinal plant also. Um, so the other thing that I brought along today is rosehip. And y'all are going to be able to take some rosehip on. Rosehip is uh, really good for vitamin C. And so when you add this to any of your teas, even your other teas that you may have at home, like you got a Lipton black tea or a green tea, and you add some rosehips to it, you're adding some vitamin C and some flavoring into um, your, your teas because rosehip, can't really describe how it tastes. It just has a really good flavor to it. Um, but with rosehips, you want to gather them after you, the first frost. Do not gather them before that. They will mold on you and they will, they, they don't have the medicinal value that they do like they do after the first frost. Um, so these were just gathered on Sunday um, and they've been out in the car ever since. If I was to keep these, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna keep any of these, I was gonna give these to you guys. Um, I would take and I would put them into a little paper bag like this and then I would keep them up in my freezer. Hmm. I wouldn't actually dry them. Um, if I wanted to dry them, then I buy bags like this. These are very worn. 
Um, these I got at the dollar store. These are one of those, those laundry bags that you can put your delicates in and then they don't get ruined in the washing machine. So you can get a package of these at the dollar store. I think there's two in a package for a buck. Um, they last a long time. I've had this one here for, I got several of these at home, but um, I've had them for probably about seven years now. You just hang them up and let them dry. If you put a whole lot of leaves in there, like if you're going to put the swamp tea leaves in there, you're going to want to take it, you're going to want to kind of shake it every couple of days and move the leaves around so that the leaves on the inside are getting to the outside so that there's air circulating around them. Okay. And then, um, and then store them in, we like to store in glass jars. I always joke with my sister that we have a thousand glass jars because she went on a glass jar buying spree two years ago. And every time she saw a package, she would buy them. So like I got glass jars. I got glass jars, people. Um, the other thing that we use, and I got these on Amazon, and these are for um, in your refrigerator to put your produce in and it keeps your produce fresher. But they also are really good at for drying because there's, um, the air circulates through them. Um, for smaller things, they're not, nothing is going to fall through. Like if I was going to do mullein flowers, yeah, I wouldn't use this one for mullein flowers. The holes are a little bit too big. Um, but for rose hips, I would put rose hips in this one. And then you just close it up and hang it up. And again, you want to shake it. And then, um, but I got these off of Amazon and it came in packs of eight there's eight there's four different sizes and they're color coded so the red ones were small the blue ones were a little bit bigger the green ones were a little bit bigger than that and then the yellow ones were even bigger so um and i think i think i paid like eight dollars for a package which i didn't think was bad because they last forever too um but yeah that's what i use you can use onion, you know, the sacks that your onions come in to re reuse those if you don't want to buy anything. Um, if you have a colander, if you have a colander, you can put them into a colander and then you can just sift it around, but it has all those little air, those little holes so the air can circulate in there. We do have some questions here too right. and comments. So back to really quickly the dandelion root. Someone just said, that they use it as an herb in cooking to make the meat more savory. Um, and then someone else said, yeah, wash, dry, and roast the root in a dry pan until it smells toasty, and then you can add it to your coffee. And then the last question is about your rose hips. Uh -huh. And it's about how long do you let them dry? But you were saying you freeze them. I freeze mine. Um, they're going, when you dry them, they're, they're going, to, they're going to shrivel up even more than this, and they're going to turn a real dark. Can you show them that? Yes. That, that side is about the color that you're going to get when they're really dry. So this is kind of the red side that's <laughs> nice, and then the dark side. I don't know if you guys can see, but basically if you dry it, it turns kind of black. Yeah, it's, it yeah, kind of it, it turns, yeah, it turns a real dark color when it's completely dry. And then when you, when they're dry too, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel that they're dry right now. Here, Andreas, why don't you pass a couple of these around? You can feel that they're kind of spongy. And so that means that there's moisture still in them. And you don't want to put them into a glass okay. jar. Rose hip. hip, the rose hip. <laughs> it's the it's the fruit that comes from like a rose flower that we don't always get to see. Yeah. So I 
the picture that I gave you guys is of the flower, the leaves, and the hip. And so this hip shows up, it's under the, the petals is where, where that rose hip is at on the bush. Oh, okay. She's wondering, she signed up for the class that she can't stay and she's wondering if she could take a little tea home with her. You most her certainly can. Make it at home. <laughs> you most certainly can. Is this the kind of stuff for the little um, pages I Okay. I think seeds inside of it if you open it up? Yeah, yeah, there's going to be some seeds inside of it if you open it up. Uh -huh. um, you can crush it and use it in, in uh, cooking, mm -hmm. but I just throw the, the hip into my tea water. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't crush it when I do that. I don't know how long it actually would take, but for those on the computer, if you can hear me way back here, <laughs> I did rose hips drying out, and I actually forgot about them, and I left them for about a year, and they, they crushed beautifully. <laughs> You're welcome. I've tried rose hips, too. Yep, you got some swamp tea, you got some rose hip, you got some cedar, and I gave you a little bit of spruce. Okay. 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 If you have any questions, you can inbox me on Facebook, Sharon Nordrum. Do you, do you get my yeah. information yeah. from Rachel? Okay. But all my stuff is public, so you know, well, and I answer all text messages just like that. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry if I stayed. It's That's so all right. Fun. This is really a good thing. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I've also dried rose hips in a year is a good long time, but I think mine were probably dry in a month. But I learned after that you're supposed to leave them like this because I've heard that the vitamin C is a lot stronger when it's, they're fresh than when they're dried. When they're dried, you basically dry out all the vitamins. I don't know if that's true. I've just read I, it. I don't think that that is true because um, if that was true, then we, would, we really wouldn't use them because how did we carry them around? Because we've used rose hips, you know, long before the settlers came here. And how would we have carried them around? We have to stop and think about how did we use things back before we had stoves, pots like they have, and things like that. We would have we would have gathered these, we would have dried them, we would have put them in pouches, and we would have carried them as we were moving from camp to camp. And a rose hip is something that we had we used. It's the medicine that we used. So I don't believe that if yeah. that they wouldn't have value. You have to be careful of what you're reading on the internet. Um, you know, I, I read quite a bit before coming here, wanted to brush up on some things and that, because it's been a while since I've given a presentation with COVID and everything. Um, you have to watch where you're at on these sites. If the site is put out by a medical facility, they're going to tell you that there is like really no medicinal value to it at all. And to see your doctor before you start using it in all these different, you know, if you have this and this and this, don't use this tea. Stop and think, what would my ancestors have done? What, how would they have used this? And I think that we've proven the point that we're, we're still here and we use our medicinal, our traditional plants and everything. And we're still here and we're alive and we're kicking. So I think our ancestors were onto something. So, you know, I just wanna point that out that, you know, don't believe everything you read on the internet. There's a lot of false information or information that they, you know, they think that it's, in, they think it's important, but it doesn't really pertain to us. And if you believe in these medicines, these medicines are going to work for you. If you don't believe in them, they're not going to, you know, because you have to have faith in, in what you're using to, right? For things to work. Faith is important. 
There's one more question here. Okay. It's how many rose hips for a cup of tea? I only use one. Again, I don't want to over do it. So I would just use one. And of course, they're all different sizes. Um, so probably if I was, can you guys see this one? So probably if I was using this one for this one, I would add another small one to make one that is like this larger one right here. You know, this is, this is the size I like to use and I use one. But if I had these little tiny ones right here, I would use two. What do you use? Because each person I, is different. I don't drink my small cup. Oh yeah. It's really. I don't think I don't like inhaling. So <laughs> I have troubles with like somebody will say it, like my sister will, when she's smudging, she'll like take a deep breath. I usually blow out. I don't know. <laughs> um so consequently, I've never smoked. <laughs> but um, so yeah, those are the teas that I brought along. I did bring along um, my friend, Jane Carlstrom. She put up this honey and this is raw honey. So it's not been processed now. So this is like straight out of the comb, raw honey and we use, honey to sweeten our teas. It also is, you know, it's loaded with all sorts of vitamins, minerals, and all those different things from the little bees going out and gathering everything and making this for us. This is the type of um, sugar that diabetics can have. It's not going to raise your blood sugars. Also um, maple syrup, if you sweeten your tea with maple syrup, it will not raise your blood sugars. Those are natural sugars as opposed to your cane. Is that the only thing that they use for white sugar? Is it cane or is it do they use beet now too? Yeah, sugar and that's like I think it's worse than that. Oh, that was so interesting. It's just so refined. It's it really so is. Refined. Um, really? I wasn't sure if they were still the white sugar like crystal. Sure. They're primarily our for us for our area. It's crystal. It's beet sugar. It's, what it's we're beet sugar. Like over at the Minnesota North Dakota border. Yeah. It's full of beet farms. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know that we have tons of beet farms over there. I wasn't sure what, <laughs> what we had for sugars. Um, we very. I very seldom. In fact, I just had to throw away a big bag of sugar because it got so hard I couldn't even break it up with pounding on it. I had no idea. I have no idea how it got like that. I was sitting in the cupboard. Probably over the summer. Yeah, the, all the moisture. I think it was the moisture in the air. I really good about like opening the whole bag in my school. <laughs> and that's my bad cap. Yeah, yeah, I remember that my aunt, she put an apple slice in her yeah. sugar, uh -huh. the sugar container. She had an apple slice in there and it would keep the sugar from, from clumping up yeah. and a couple of grains of rice in in with the salt yeah to yeah. keep that from clumping up i don't know i don't know where she got those ideas but you know um and they worked yeah but anyways so anyways um this is pure honey also i want to mention when you're using um honey you really should use honey from within like a 50 mile radius of your place of residence. If you do that, you're going to have a lot less um, allergies to plants and the pollens that are in the air because the bees are collecting from those plants that are in your area. And when you eat this, your body is starting to build up immunities to those. So I had a friend that her daughter broke out from grass. She like couldn't go outside in the summertime because her whole body would just break out from grass. And they went and they, they put her on pure honey um, from her area. And it took a while to build up the immunity in it, but um, 
the following summer, after doing that all one year, the following summer, she was able to go outside and she could play. She could be in the grass um, because her body built up immunities by eating the honey. So that, is, you know, it's got really good medicinal values in it also. Um, all right. So about it. The only other thing that I was going to talk about is the different ways of, you know, naturally with the, the cedar and the spruce. That's how bad my eyes are, people. I couldn't see my spruce. It's laying here in the cedar. Um, with these ones, you're just going to want to lay these into the pot, but like for the, your swamp tea or your mullein tea, we have this little, um, this little tea strainer. I got it at Lucan's. So you can put your, your stuff inside there. You can put it and then you can put it in your pot and you can put your, your steaming water down over the top of it in your cup and then let it sit like that. Um, I went on Amazon a few years ago and I got these little tea bags. So you can put your stuff into a tea bag and then you just bunch it up like that. These are non-bleached. So you don't have any of that bleach going into your teas, keeping them nice, pure and natural. Um, but they come a lot. I was gonna give you guys some of these too to take home. It comes in a package like this. And I don't know, I think it was like four or $5 for a package of however many tea bags are in here, or a lot. Um, and then they're stainless. Yep, the little tea bells. Yeah, I was gonna bring along my tea bell and I couldn't find it. I'm, because we, we started using this guy, because then you could push to and then you can get out all of the, oh, nice. the, the tea from it. Yeah, you just squeeze it right down. Because we do a lot of loose leaf teas too, you know, buying um, off the internet and stuff like that, different kinds of wild berries and stuff like that teas. Um, so this one here was really nice. I'm gonna buy one like this for my, my older sister. Um, but yeah, you have the little tea bell. You can go to Mackenzie's place and they have a tea ball infuser and it's a mesh ball that breaks apart and you put your tea in that and then put it in there and you can steep it like with that too. A chain? Yeah, they have, little, they have chains on them. I have, I don't use them for tea, you guys can laugh at me. I do scent work with my dogs, but I have little itty bitty tea infusers that they're about like this big. I have absolutely no idea what kind of tea you would put into that, but I have them like that and I put the scent cone in there for my dog to find the scent. And, but yeah, that's a, that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> and all of those folks, well, a good majority of them know that once I get talking about dogs, it's a lost cause. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go into the kitchen and we're going to get a pot of, what kind of tea do you guys want to try? You want, what do you want to make? We can make a couple different kinds of tea. I'm kind of interested to see what the spruce tastes like. Should we try spruce? Okay, so we're gonna go into the kitchen. Okay, I'll sign off here with these folks. All right, see you guys. Thank you all for joining us today. If you have any questions, just give me a holler. Most of you know me. <laughs> I think I think it's a good stopping point. <laughs> Um, so thank you guys, everyone who joined us here on Zoom um, here at Four Directions Development. We have a couple of upcoming ones that'll come out soon, but Del Perkins is going to do buffalo meat and hominy stew on February 16th. And you guys all here too can take a flyer. We are going to do elderberry elixir um, with Esther Humphrey, who's going to be able to come in person next time. That'll be on February 27th. That's a Sunday, a little different. Um, and then everyone who put your emails in here, I will send you the packet that Sharon brought in so you can get all the information and the recording will be available. Yes, um, this has been recorded, Adrian, and I can get it onto YouTube later this week. Are there any other questions on Zoom before we go make you guys jealous and try this amazing tea?
Everyone just saying miigwech. <laughs> All right. Thank you.